That's Ray Davis over there. Give us a little taste, Ray.
Brother Ray Davis, accompanied by David Neal and John Hart. And if you haven't heard already, you've heard now that you are the light of the universe. You are the light that lights up every man and every woman that comes into the world. And as this light, you're an emanation of the most high God presence that is everywhere in its fullness, and that by means of you is seeking to express itself more completely according to your unique pattern. We have heard scripturally that without vision, the people perish. And so as we're still in the very first month of the year, we wanted to embrace the articulation of the vision that's pulling us to a greater expression of the activation of our supreme destiny. Everyone has a great destiny. The spirit of the living God is in every being, and every being is in the spirit of the living God. And so there's a destiny within you, not merely fate. Fate is what happens, that fate is the experience we have by uh, outpicturing unresolved issues and things of that particular nature. We're not run by fate. When we become available to the universal laws, we become pulled by a greater destiny. So today in this contemplative service, we're going to embrace our destiny. We're going to embrace our purpose. We're going to embrace a transcendent vision and begin to articulate it. I'm going to move you through the vision process with some teaching process and uh, music. And so the first thing that I, that I want you to know is that the universe answers every question that you ask. Every question that you ask, the universe is continually answering. Most people that are uninitiated and into the sacred laws of the universe have the tendency to ask questions that are disempowering. They will prematurely ask, what's wrong? Who's to blame? Why me? These questions are asked by uninitiated beings, beings who don't know the nature of reality. As you begin to grow mature and mature spiritually, you don't ask what's wrong. You don't ask who's to blame. You don't ask, why me? You instead begin to ask, what is the meaning of life? You begin to ask, what's trying to emerge in my life? What gift is trying to be given? You begin to ask, what is the vision for my life? You begin to ask, what can I bring to life? Now, that last question is very, very powerful because many people who are uninitiated going into this year after this particular election cycle are waiting to see what's going to happen. They're asking, what's going to happen? Instead of asking, what am I going to bring uh, to this year? What am I going to bring to this life? That's an empowering question. And so we're going to begin to go through a vision process in which, one, we're going to ask empowering question around our own life. We're going to begin to ask areas of our own growth. We're going to be asked, what do we have already that can be in service to the unfolding vision? We're going to begin to ask ourselves, what can we now let go of that no longer serves us individually and collectively? We're going to begin to tap into the, the vibratory feeling tone of willingness, the vibratory feeling tone of the sacred yes that is within all of us that allows us to become more of our real self. We're going to have a moment of prayer, real heartfelt prayer not begging and beseeching, but a connection with reality that allows the manifestation of the glory of the vision that is held within us to outpicture and to compel us into right action on a regular basis. And so I have my magnificent uh, staff and ministers uh, here with me in the sanctuary. I have you, there was 9,000 of you, uh, at the early morning service on the uh, Facebook live stream, Facebook live and the live stream. And so perhaps there's even more with us right now as we begin to feel into a vision for our life. So I want you to begin right now before I get reared up and just start speaking for the next hour, <laughs> which is not uncommon for me. <laughs> I want us to all just kind of just stop Allow yourself to inhale deeply. Close the outer eye and release the breath. And begin to center down with me. Begin to pull your attention away from the world, away from conditions, circumstances, situations, people, places, things. 
all the stuff that has snagged your mind and pulled you into snagnation. We're coming out of snagnation. We're coming out of stagnation. We're coming into the evolution of our consciousness. So as we turn within in this moment with the awareness that God through the universe answers every question that we ask, we begin to ask a very empowering question. Now the first question I want you to ask, I want you to ask yourself, what is the most powerful moment of love, unconditional love I have ever encountered in my life? For some of you, you immediately go to a grandparent. Some of you may go to a parent. Some of you may go to a trusty friend, a loved one. Some of you might even go to an animal friend in which you had a direct encounter with divine love without conditions, without agenda, without manipulation. It was just love. I want you to, to pull that remembrance into your mind right now. I want you to remember the feeling tone of love. And I want you to take a deep breath now. Inhale. And when you hear the clap of my hand, I want you to magnify that feeling tone of love times 10. Exhale. And just feel into the feeling tone of love. It's unconditional. No border, no ceiling. No time and space can block it. You remember that love. You may have, your grandmother may have looked at you in the eye and, and saw who you really were. A grandfather, a friend, an uncle, an aunt, a godmother, a godfather, a parent, a loved one. Feel into that love. And for the rest of this process, we're dedicating our breath to be a talisman for the activation and the expansion of that love. So whenever you notice yourself, notice yourself breathing, you're becoming aware that you're living, moving, and having your beingness in the love of God. You're safe. You're protected. God's all around you. Now, in the feeling tone of love, we begin the vision process. With your eyes still closed. Simply ask, what is what is God's idea of itself as my life? When God thinks of me and my life and my purpose and my destiny, what comes up? What's trying to emerge in my life now? What am I seeking to give birth to? What's trying to express more fully through me now? What is the sacred vision that I'm now being pulled by? And so I invite you to just ask the question in your own way, your own words. Nothing else is important except you being pulled by a vision, empowered by the presence of God. You don't have to ask right now how you're going to do this. No. The details aren't up to you right now. What's up to you is you catching a vision. Remember what I said at the outset, without vision, the people perish. So we're being pulled by a sacred vision. And so with your outer eye closed and your inner eye open, what is the vision for my life? What's trying to emerge in my life now? What qualities are trying to be born through me? What gifts are trying to express through me? Listen with the inner ear. Everyone is loaded and coated with infinite potential. What you have come to bring to the earth, not what you have come to take from the world, but what you have come to bring, it's encapsulated in your vision. It would take a moment for you to simply listen with your heart.
what is God's idea of itself as my life? What is the sacred vision of my heart? What am I to bring to the world? What am I to give? What am I to share? Feel into it. As we're contemplating being pulled by a vision, the still small voices, it's elegant. It's sweet. And what you're being pulled to is not self-aggrandizement or selfishness. What you're being pulled to, what you're being pulled to share and be benefits everyone. You become a beneficial presence as you're living your transcendent vision and as the transcendent vision is becoming more imminent, more real. Feel into it and see if you can begin to catch its articulation. The eternal broadcast from infinite mind is perennial, perpetual, constant, consistent, and never wavers. This presence of God is always speaking, always emanating, always radiating. By asking the question, we're becoming receptive. Ask, and ye shall receive. You're making yourself receptive. What is the highest vision for my life? What is God's idea of itself as my life? What's trying to emerge? What's trying to be born through me now? Listen. Remember, you're living, moving, and having your beingness in the presence of God. Not an anthropomorphic being, but a presence that is never an absence, always being itself. God love, God peace, God joy, God abundance, God beauty. God is, God is, God is, God is. What is your vision? Just another moment of listening. Oh, 
as you sing.
the soulful vocal stylings of Reverend Leon Campbell, our youth and family director here at Agape International, allowing us to just feel where you are in that meditation, that you're living, moving, and having your beingness in the power and the presence and the love and the beauty and the intelligence, the order and the harmony of God, the living presence of God Almighty, all beauty and all joy. You've begun to catch that there's a destiny within you. You've begun to catch that there's a vision pulling you, particularly as people are making resolutions and things of that particular nature during the beginning of the year. We want to have more than a, 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 more than a resolution. We want to have a vision. We want to be pulled by our righteous purpose. And our purpose is to reflect and to reveal the face of God everywhere according to our unique pattern. And that unique pattern is the vision that's pulling us that you may have begun to articulate, to feel into, and to sense, and begin to give little, maybe you caught a glimpse, maybe you caught an image, a sign, maybe you caught a sound, maybe you caught a, a word, maybe you caught more, maybe for some of you, something opened up and you can actually see why you are here on the planet. You can begin to see your giftedness. You can begin to see what you're to bring. You can begin to see dimensions of the vision that which you chose to be about before you incarnated on planet Earth. You chose to be here and you chose to be here at this particular time in human history where so much is going on on the planet. The rising of negativity and the rising of an awakened consciousness at the same time, so much is going on. And you've chose to be here to make a difference and to allow your vision to pull you from any sense of selfishness to selflessness to a grander vision for your life and the life of the human family and all sentient beings on the world, on the planet. So now we're going to go to the second question. The second question is about becoming. Here's the, here's the sacred truth. You can't have anything that you're not willing to become in consciousness. It's an impossibility. You can manipulate and temporarily get stuff and things, and you can manipulate to get things how you think you might want them. But if, you, if there's no vibrational match there, then you will lose it. So there has to be a becoming in consciousness. We all have to be willing to grow. We all have to be willing to, to transform, to become more of our real self. I don't mean on a personality level. I mean the real God self, the love, the intelligence, the beauty, the creativity, the joy, the genius. You have to be willing to become this. And so in this particular question, we explore what is it that we must become? And without judgment or censorship, we hear the voice of God within us directing us. Perhaps we need to become more loving. Perhaps we need to become more giving, more patient. Perhaps we need to, to become more self-loving and appreciative. Perhaps we need to embrace more courage, more generosity. Perhaps we need to be more forgiving and less resentful. Only you know the areas in your life. Other people can think they know, they don't. Other people may think they know what's best for you. They do not. They know what's best for them. And you ultimately know what's best for you. And so when we explore this question, what must we become without denial or censorship or judgment, we become available to the next steps of our own unfolding, the next step of our own soul's evolution. 
Now, I, I come back to no judging because sometimes you may see something about yourself that needs to change, and you're not to, to judge it or be mad at it or feel any sense of shame about it. This is an awareness exercise where you're simply shining the light of your awareness on areas where you need to grow. That's it. Without judgment or shame. That's, that's the ego that wants you to be in shame or guilt because that's how the ego keeps you within a small perception of yourself. And so we, we open ourselves up and we simply look. What must we become now? Individually, as a community, what, what must we become as a species in order to survive on this planet with extinction events looming large on the planet, environmental uh, uh, circumstances are occurring, nuclear proliferation, pollution, degradation of our soil, wars and rumors of wars. What must we become as a species? What must we become individually? Perhaps we need to individually eliminate any warring that's going on in our own awareness that outpictures itself on the global landscape. Maybe we need to come a little bit more self-loving and appreciative, compassionate to ourselves, so that we can be compassionate and patient and kind to others. Because you can only give to your other others what you perpetually give to yourself. And so I invite you once again in this moment of contemplation to have your feet firmly placed on the ground, to begin to turn within, extricating your attention from the world, circumstances, situations, even release your own opinions about stuff. When you reach a higher order of being, your opinion, my opinion, is unimportant. It means nothing to the mind of God, our opinions. We want to have insights, revelations, wisdom, and real guidance. So become conscious, turn within, settle into the stillness for a moment, settle into the quietude, settle into the golden silence. As you begin to ask this question, what is it that I must become in order to fulfill my destiny? in order to birth the vision that's, that I'm beginning to articulate. What must I become? Not what must they become? What must he become or she or they or them or the politicians of the world or anyone in our life? Not what they must become. What must I become? What is my growing edge? Where must I grow? And ask, just ask, what must I become now? Just ask, where must I grow? What area of my life needs attention? The emotional body, mental body, physical body, body of my affairs, attitude, perceptions, conversations, habits, priorities. Where must I grow now? so that I can be a translucent and transparent instrument for the vision that God has for my life. Where must I grow? Listen. Where must I grow? Listen. What must I become? Listen.
there's not only no censorship here or denying or blocking out, there's no judgment or shame. There's just awareness, that's all. If there's a priority that needs to change in your life, you need to add more prayer time, you need to add, shift something in your life, you don't judge yourself about it, you just acknowledge it and let it become a f part of the fabric of your consciousness that this area of your life you're now willing to change in. That's all. For right now, that's all. What must we become? We're listening with our entire being. We're hearing to he or she who can most perfectly practice in action. To them all things are possible. From Lao Tzu to Ernest Holmes. If you can practice in action, the surface mind is not running the show here. Your question is making you available to the higher mind. You're the angels of your higher nature. You come under the governance of the angels of your higher nature. And asking the question, what must I become now? I'm willing. I want to become more myself. Listen and see how you're guided. Where must you grow? Where must your priorities change? Where must your conversations change? Where must your actions change? Where must we grow? Can I serve today, sweet spirit? How can I serve today alone? Speak in ways that I will understand where you lead. I'm 
shall we serve today? Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead us, we will follow. Spirit of the living God, you're being pulled by a vision. Thank you, Ray. Being pulled by a vision, and you're taking responsibility for your own unfolding. You're looking at where you need to grow without judgment, without, without shame. Just, I need to grow in this area. If I grow in this area and I take the stand to walk in this direction, I will create a vibrational match for the divine energies to flow through me. I'll be able to manifest. I'll be able to demonstrate the vision for my life. And so, as we're beginning, continuing to catch the vision, as we're beginning to catch where we must grow in order to manifest the vision, there's another question that's very, very, very important. And the question is, what do I have in my house? What do I have to share, to give in support of the vision? And this is a very important question because in individuals who, who, again, who are uninitiated into the sacred laws of the universe have a tendency to walk through the world looking at what they don't have. They have the feeling tone of what they don't have, the emotional tone of what they don't have. That's how they look at life. I lack this. I don't have this. I don't have enough of this. And all along, they're not celebrating what they do have. There's a law, and it's not a personal law. So don't take this personally. But there's a law in, our, in the Holy Writ, in the Bible, that says to he or she who has, more shall be given. And to he or she who has not, that which they have shall be taken away. Now don't take it personally. It's a vibrational law. If you walk around feeling that you have, then the law matches that, and you discover you keep having more and more essentially what you need. Your legitimate needs are met. If you walk around down in the mouth all the time, bemoaning your fate about what you don't have, then that which you do have will be taken away because vibrationally, there's no match to abundance. There's no match to prosperity. There's no match to real happiness, real joy, real love. And so we're here to create within ourselves a vibrational match. What do I have that can be in service to the vision? Doesn't have to be, doesn't even have to be tangible. What do I have? What gifts and talents are within me that maybe need to be a little bit more cultivated or shared or given? What do I have? This was the mystical story of the, the widow that goes to the great prophet, bemoaning her fate about her husband dying, who was a great mucky muck in the kingdom, and her kids were gonna be put into slavery in order to pay off the debt, and she asked the prophet for help, and he says, what do you want me to do for you, woman? Eventually he says, what do you have in your house? And she speaks of the oil and the crews of oil, and he teaches her how to circulate the oil and share the oil, and they, her and her family create a cottage, cottage business. <laughs> around this oil that never runs out because mystically when you circulate and give, the spirit keeps giving you more to give. The prophet asked her, what do you have in your house? So we're asking ourselves, what do we have? And we let our mind just scan the, our inner terrain of consciousness. What do we have? So that we walk in the world with a being and having consciousness so that that which needs to demonstrate our legitimate needs can show up because there's a vibrational match to being and having rather than lack and getting. Lack, selfishness, getting, acquisitive nature. We see that part of the ego has run the show in the Western world of the planet for many years. And what has it gotten us? Ice caps melting, rainforest, is sh rainforest shrinking, strip mining, pollution, hate, war, greed. 
And so we want to begin to operate from being and having so that selflessness and sharing and our giftedness begins to be activated so that we get to bring heaven to earth. So I'm inviting you in this moment of contemplation to turn within again. You'll hear some soft sounds by Brother Ray to help you. We're still open and receptive to our vision. It's still speaking. We're still open and receptive to our becoming, where our growing edge, what we must become. But now we're inviting another question. What do we have to give that can be in service to the vision? Perhaps there's a gift that you have that is underutilized or you haven't been willing to share it or perhaps there's some parts of you that are latent but it's now ready to be activated to share for your vision. Perhaps it's something, people, resources, things that you just take for granted. You just, you don't even give thanks for them because they're so present, they're always around and and then there might be a sudden loss or unavailability, and then you become very conscious about how important that gift is, that person is, that circumstance is, that situation is. So what do you have in your, in your consciousness? What do you have in your house? Your house is your consciousness. What do you have in your consciousness that you may have not been grateful for, you may have taken for granted, or needs to be activated? That can be in service to the vision. Now, I'm not going to plant anything in your mind. I just want it to bubble up because you asked the question, what do I have? What do I have in my house? As the prophet asked the widow, what do you have in your house? We ask ourselves, what do I have in my house? In my consciousness that can be of great service to the vision. We listen again. We listen with our whole heart and soul, our entire being. We listen. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Listen. Listen. with our entire being, reverential alertness, availability. What do I have? What is that's within me that's greater than anything in the world that I have to share? according to Thomas tells us the Apocrypha that are about our gifts if we share them they'll make a way for us if we don't share us they'll turn against us I'm paraphrasing what do you have to share to give to shine to radiate that will make a vibrational way for you where there appears to be no way.
to listen. You're capturing and being captured by and pulled by a vision for your life. So every intention and every goal will be worthy of your soul because it will be in alignment with your vision, not the world's fantasy about you, but your soul's call. Your becoming is your, your growing edge. And we're now acknowledging that we have something in our house. We have gifts, we have talents, we have capacities, we have powers. We have resources. What are they? They can be in service to the vision. For all of you who are streaming around the world, feel into the quietude of this and participate in this fully. What do you have in your house? Feel into it. All three questions are active. You're receptive. You are available. You ask a question, and the universe answers. What do you have? You're not willing to take it for granted anymore. A song for the morning, morning, rise and breathe in the feeling, feeling of nothing but blue skies, fresh and clear, nothing to fear in this bright field, in this bright field of love and possibilities. Here is taste. Time for sitting silent, still, still, breathing in the moment, this moment, before the clang cacophony of where to be descends on me. I sit, I breathe, I remember. Here's a song for the morning. Nothing but blue skies, fresh and clear. Nothing to fear in this bright field, in this bright field of love and possibilities. Here is where I'll be, but simply can't be done. Simply being holy in the moment, this moment. And though my mind may interrupt with thoughts both pious and corrupt, and for a time it may hold sway, still I sit, I listen, and remember, remember. Here's a song for the morning, morning. a song for the morning and dawning and our own consciousness. We're invited to rise. Rise. The next
next question? It's a good question. What do we have to let go of that no longer serves us? It may have served us in the past, absolutely needed. But at this stage of our development and unfoldment and spiritual maturity, it doesn't serve us anymore. Again, it's an awareness exercise where we simply become aware of it. Maybe it was a great defense from a hurt. A perception that we needed to have in order to, to, to take care of ourselves. But with the armor of the vision, the armor of our Christ consciousness, and the armor of the presence of God, it may not be necessary anymore. Live streamers, what are you prepared to let go of as we move into the beginning of this year? What habits no longer serve you? What conversations no longer serve you? What ways that you treat yourself no longer serve you that you're not willing to let go of? First, we tease it into consciousness in order to let it go. Healing is remembering before you can forget. You remember so you can let go. And so you don't have to figure this out. All you have to do is ask the question and let it bubble up. And let me, let me give you this bit of uh, teaching as well. When you're involved in the vision process, the vision process doesn't begin and end with the particular session that we're in. It continues. You may be driving your car, walking in the park, taking a bath, and suddenly you have an insight regarding one of those questions. You've become, you've kind of let go. You've got about it. You've gone on about your business, and then suddenly your vision shows up. Or where you need to grow. Or you begin to be aware of something that you have in your consciousness that you never thought about, that you can, you can use, you have a resource that you didn't even know about or you had forgotten about. Or something you need to let go of suddenly becomes very clear to you. It wasn't clear in the session, but it becomes clear later. In other words, we're setting something in motion here, here in the sanctuary and around the world. We're saying at the beginning of 2017, we want to be pulled by a vision. That vision is in alignment with our purpose. Our purpose is to reflect and to reveal the cosmos in a way that has never happened before. We want to be in integrity with our soul. It's not a moral thing. Integrity means you're, being an, you're an integrous being with your soul's call, not society's call. Because some of you know you'd be out of integrity if you supported more prisons. You'd be out of integrity if you supported the building up of nuclear arms and nuclear waste from nuclear plants, you'd be, you're not in integrity. So being in integrity is not being in integrity with, with the world, your soul. That's where integrity is. And so what is it, live streamers, love streamers, members of Agape? that you're willing to let go of now? What perceptions, what habits, what points of view, what priorities no longer serve you today? It's turned within. Our feet are firmly placed upon the ground. Our heart is open. Remember, you're surrounded by love. That love that you receive from your loved one is amplified with every breath you're taking. You're in a field of safety, a zone of safety and well-being. You're safe. You're in God. You're in God and God is in you. You're in Mother, Father, God. Mother, Father, God is in you. The wave is in the ocean. The ocean is in the wave. What must, what are we willing to let go of now? It doesn't serve us anymore. It constricts us. It hampers us. Contracts our heart, our soul, our creativity. It doesn't work for us anymore. Listen without judgment. Listen with your entire being. Listen. Don't deny. Listen. We're in this process together.
amidst the golden silence and the sacred stillness, we listen. There's a vision pulling us, a becoming, an embracing of what we have and who we really are, and a letting go of anything that doesn't serve us with the awareness that all, 100%, all spiritual growth is about letting go. Filter, perception, habit, something. Because God, all that there is, recreated itself with nothing missing. So we don't need to add who by taking thought can add one cubit to their stature. So we're letting go of a thought form. We're letting go of a perception, letting go of a habit, letting go of something that's inhibiting us from seeing, right seeing, spiritual vision, what no longer serves us.
it's all right now looks like you made it somehow it's all right said and you've heard it sung. If you're live streaming, you can follow suit of many of the people right here in the sanctuary that are writing down notes, key phrases, statements, intuitive hits regarding their vision, regarding what they must become, regarding what's in their house, regarding what they must let go of. You can do that as well between these particular contemplative moments. We're coming to a close of the process, but we're coming to a very, very important part, and that's called willingness. You see, the universe handles the details via our willingness. If you become willing to grow, a real sincere willingness, sincerity, being in integrity with your soul, you're willing to become more yourself, then the universe works out the details providing everything necessary for you to take your next step. Where there's willfulness, there's a wall. Where there's willingness, there's a way. And so as we're maturing on our spiritual path, we become more willing, more pliable, more open. We will the will of God to be done in our life, which means we're willing for a greater expression of life to happen. People discuss ages and ages and ages what the will of God is and I'm here to tell you it's very simple the will of God is for a greater expression of life love beauty and the extension of all the God qualities that's the will of God so when you become willing to embrace the vision for your life you become willing to grow you become willing to embrace what you have not take it for granted you become willing to let go. You enter into a state of vibration of willingness, then you're no longer inhibiting the flow of the presence of God through all of its instruments to cycle you up into a higher states of, of consciousness and well-being. And so this, this final process today is one around willingness. It's one around activating our sacred yes, our divine and sacred yes. And so once again, with the sweet silence around the wonderful notes via Ray Davis, we turn within. And we give thanks for whatever willingness we have in our heart right now. And we scan our awareness and we remember moments in our life where we simply became willing to try a new thing. We became willing to grow, we became willing to go for something, we became willing to extend ourselves and not knowing what was gonna happen, whether it was gonna work or, but we know the feeling tone and the vibrational frequency of willingness. We know the vibrational frequency of yes, the sacred yes, the yes to God, the yes to intelligence, the yes to excellence. And we know encapsulated in the yes is a no. 
Once you say yes, really, then you're also saying no. No to mediocrity, no to excuses, no to apathy, no to lethargy, slovenly. You're saying no to something the moment you say yes to life. And so with your outer eye closed, the inner eye open, feel into the frequency of, of willingness. Remember how that feels. I'm willing. I'm willing. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm willing. I'm willing. Feel into the vibration of sacred yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I'm willing. Say with those here in the sanctuary, yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I am willing. Now, in that vibrational frequency, we once again allow it to amplify willingness. We once again allow it to amplify willingness. Yes, willingness. Yes to life. Willingness. Yes. Deeply inhale. Suspend the breath. When you hear this clap of my hand, amplify willingness 100-fold. And then breathe out. Feel the frequency of willingness. Oh, I'm so willing to be my best self and to be governed by the angels of my higher nature. I'm so willing to embrace the gifts and talents within me and to express them fully and completely. I'm so willing to let go of anything that no longer serves me. I'm willing, I'm willing to embrace the edge of my own growth. I'm willing to be captured and pulled by a vision that I'm learning to articulate a little bit more and a little bit better every day. I'm willing. Feel into the willingness. Feel into the willingness. Feel into the willingness. And in this dynamic of willingness, I speak the word for each of us, knowing that there's only one of us here, one ocean, many waves, one presence, Many infinite expressions of the presence. I speak the word for each and every one of us with a deep sense of gratitude and thanksgiving and appreciation for my life, for the life of God operating and acting and expressing through me and through we. Grateful. And in this consciousness of gratitude and thanksgiving and pure appreciation, I set something in motion by the power of the word, the, the logos, the vibration, the frequency of the word that I'm speaking is for each and every one of us that we may be free from any lack, any limitation, any restriction, any hindrance, that we may step up to the vibrational plate and let God be God as our life. That health-wise, every organ action function of our body temple is made new. Our mental body, absolutely clear. Our emotional body, totally pure. The body of our affairs reflects and reveals the sacred order, sacred geometry, the sacred order of the universe, an order, an elegance, and a beauty. And everything is working together for our individual and for our collective good. Feel into that right now where your vision is concerned where your embodiment of your next stage of unfoldment is concerned, where you're letting go. You're having and being. Oh, feel that you have everything you need right now. It's, it's, not a, it's not against the law to feel that you have everything you need. It's the right use of the law to feel it. So in this consciousness, we also embrace Peggy Zimmerman. Right where she is, God is, we embrace Cassandra. Morello for her mother, Patricia. John Majors for his nephew Charles, and we continue to embrace Richard Knapp for his wife Vicky, who made the transition, and Peggy Zimmerman's friend Karen Kahan, who made the transition from the visible to our sensorium to the invisible, only seeing with the divine eye. So in this moment of great consciousness and great love and great setting in motion and embracing a vision, as we begin this year together, we bless Agape International Spiritual Center as a divine and perfect spiritual idea held in the mind of the infinite that has everything it needs for its own unfoldment, its own evolution, its own capacity to be in service to thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people on this planet. Every
everything is working together for our individual collective good so that we continue to rise to the next level of consciousness as a community making a mighty difference on the planet at this time in human history and beyond. We bless Agape. It has what it needs now. When? Now. It's happening right now. The eternal is perennial. It's only in the now. Right now, all needs are met for Agape. Its constituents, its family, love streamers, all is well. And for this, and more than words can ever, ever articulate, convey, we let it be. If you're in vibrational harmony, simply say, and so it is. Even if you're live streaming, say, and so we are. And so I am. Amen. 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 Ah,